up until this point, uh, we haven't really dealt with negative numbers. And there's some things we say computers don't do or do it differently. So division or uh, fractional parts to the right of the decimal point. Uh, we didn't cover those topics because computers do them a little bit different way. But negative numbers is a topic that we have to cover. This video is going to cover 8-bit sine 2's complement values. 8-bits uh, mean that there's a maximum of 8-bits used. And what happens in this system, uh, we'll do a little bit of explaining and some back and forth uh, examples as we go along here. Uh, so we have 8 bits. And let's put our 8 places here. Right, and this is um, D0. And this is D6. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going to call this the sine bit. I'll put an S up above there. What's going to happen when we put a binary number in here? Uh, this portion of that number is going to deal with what we would call the magnitude of the number itself. And this portion is going to be the sine. And um, 0 is going to be a negative number. And 1, I'm sorry, uh, let me fix that. 0 is going to be a positive, represent a positive value in the sine bit, and 1 is going to represent a negative. So um, there's one little uh, complication for that before we get the examples, and we'll sort of show you why this works too. But um, if I just put a 0 in here, and then put 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and as long as this sine is a sine bit is a zero and it's a positive number it, the magnitude part is just like binary before so this is the one's position this is the two uh, four eight sixteen thirty two and sixty four so as long as i have a positive number all i have to do is go in to find out what positive number in decimal i'm representing uh, i find out all the positions where it's one and that's eight uh, plus two plus 1, right? That's what, 11 altogether? And not only 11, it's positive 11. And that works good. Um, I'd, I'd always tell students, uh, treat the sine bit separately from the magnitude. And hopefully the system doesn't get too confusing, but I, I've seen it be confusing to uh, different students. So um, that's erase that and let's do a negative example. So I'm going to erase the number in here. I'm going to erase the comments that we had. Um, once again, I'll, I'll take this uh, value out of here, but remember to deal with the sign bit separately and we'll get rid of these, right? So let's put an example in here. Uh, this time it's going to be a negative number. So that means the sign bit has to be a 1 and let's do this okay and i have to tell you this is an 8-bit sign uh, two's complement number because it looks just like a binary number unless someone tells me um i wouldn't know but if i tell you that and you see that the sign bit is a one that first off means i'm going to get a negative for the answer so you can already you, that's already determined we do that the difference between um, positive numbers and negative numbers in this 8-bit sign 2's complement form is that the magnitude is stored as a 2's complement number. And to find out what that value is, you got to get it out of the 2's complement. And the cool thing is to get something out of the 2's complement, you just take the 2's complement of it again. So... Um, this is giving us this 8-bit sine 2's number to start. We'll give you an example where we give you a decimal number and tell you to put it in there. So I got to take the 2's complement in this number. Remember that method where I, I put my hand over things and up to and including the first one. So my hand's over all that stuff. And I change this to a 1, this to a 1, this to a 1. And then my hand is covering up all these so they remain the same. 
Also notice I only used the 7 bits in the magnitude. The sign bit already determined this negative sign, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. And if you include it, you're going to get the wrong answer. So, um, then I just do my binary conversion. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 32, 32, 64, right? So 64 plus 32. Should have picked a smaller number. I thought I was, but uh, that's what two's complement does to you. So that's 96 uh, plus 16, right? Is 2 carry to 1, 11. That's 112 plus 8. And if I did that right, I get 120. Now remember, the sign bit told us this is uh, negative, so it's negative 120 in decimal. Nice stuff. Uh, you have to remember that the magnitude is different. It's just binary for positive numbers. But um, when you have the sign bit as a 1 and you're representing a negative number, the magnitude is in 2's complement form, and you have to take it out of 2's complement form to get an, uh, an answer. So let's go the opposite direction to make sure that we understand this. Let's get rid of all this stuff again. And that's, we'll keep the magnitude thing, and we'll keep that. Um, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this divider. We know that if we deal with it separately, we're okay. Let's get rid of the number, our little um, thing for keeping track for two's complement. And let's start with the decimal number. So uh, let's say positive 18. So if I give you a positive 18 in decimal and tell you uh, find the 8-bit sine two's, sine comp, two's complement value that represents that, first off, I know that the sine bit is a zero. And then all I have to do is take 18 in decimal and convert it to binary. And we've done that, right? The highest value we can. So that's a 1. These are zeros. By the way, this is 8-bit sine 2's complement, so there's always 8 bits here. Um, I do have a maximum for the positive number that I can represent. We'll get to that shortly. But that's 16, right? This is 0, this is 0, this is a 1. 16 plus 2 is 18, so that must be a 0. And that's how I represent negative 18. Good stuff. Pretty easy. Magnitude is just a binary value, and that's how it works. Okay, hang on, because this is where I see people get upset um, or confused. Maybe not so upset, but confused. And what we're going to do is start out with a negative decimal number and see if we can get the right answer. So let's do negative, let me get my pen here, negative 28. Okay, right away. Sign bit is separate. It's a negative number. It's there. Uh, now, what I have to do is take 28 and convert it to binary. And I'm not going to do it in here. It's going to take two steps. So I'm going to do it, uh, I'll do it up here a little bit. Uh, 28, right? So that would mean this, this bit is a zero, this bit is a zero, right? Um, 16, or 28 minus 16, so a one there, and that leaves 12, and that would be eight and four, and these two would be zero. So if I did that conversion right, uh, this is the number I have. The problem is, is when you have the magnitude for a negative number to start out, our decimal value, um, the sign bit is a 1, but this also, after I do the binary conversion, I have to take the 2's complement of it. So here's my shortcut method, right? Cover up, up to and including the first 1, and these have to change, right, to the opposite. And anything covered up is one zero zero, just comes down the way it is. And that is the answer. Um, this value that you see here in 8-bit sine two's complement represents the number negative 28. And you can take it back out. Just take the two's complement of the magnitude. You should come up with this number. Um, and sine bit is there, so you know it's a negative number. And then you convert this to binary and you get 28. And that's how it works. 
Uh, this video is running a little bit longer than what I like, um, so we're going to end it there. And I'm going to make another video that's going to show you why this system works. Uh, someone came up with this a long time ago. They wanted uh, a way to represent negative numbers in a computer system, and this is how all of them represent negative numbers. And there's a good reason for that, and that video will handle it. So um, we'll see you in the future. Study this stuff, get it down, make sure you can't get it wrong.